Hi, I'm William Spaniel, and welcome to this new course on bargaining theory, aptly titled Bargaining 101. This lecture kicks things off with a discussion of the bargaining problem. Let's start here with a common dilemma that you will undoubtedly encounter at some point in your life. Imagine that you want a raise, and in fact, you need a minimum of $20 per hour to stay with your current company. Perhaps that's because an outside firm has offered you that amount to go work for them. Well, when you sit down with your boss, how much of a raise will you actually receive? We can split this into three cases. First, imagine that your employer values you at less than $20 per hour. Here, you're going to be walking away from the company. You need at least $20 per hour to stay, and your employer is unwilling to pay you that amount. So you're leaving. The second case is the rare instance where your employer values you at exactly $20 per hour. Here, we can make a very precise prediction without having to think too much further. If you need at least $20 per hour to stay, and your employer is only willing to pay you up to $20 per hour, then there's one value, exactly one value, that is mutually satisfactory, and that is for the employer to pay you exactly $20 per hour. The most interesting case is this last case, where your employer values you at more than $20 per hour. And for the sake of illustration, let's say that he actually values you at $50 per hour. Let's look at this geometrically. Any value between $0 and $20 is a wage that you would reject. You need at least $20 to stay, and a wage between $0 and $20 is insufficient to get that to happen. On the other end of the spectrum, any value greater than $50 is a wage your employer would reject. Your employer simply doesn't value you that much. But any value between $20 and $50 is a mutually acceptable wage. That's a wage that you would prefer to take than to leave the company, and it's a wage that your employer would prefer to pay you than to have you leave the company. And in fact, we call the values between $20 and $50 the bargaining range. That's because you and your employer need to negotiate where exactly you will fall between $20 and $50. So this course is an analysis of the bargaining problem. These sorts of non-trivial bargaining situations have multiple mutually acceptable settlements. And so the problem is figuring out exactly which settlement we land on. Why do you sometimes get closer to $50? Why does your employer sometimes get you closer to $20? These are the types of questions that we're interested in answering. And so the course goal is, in fact, to explain how bargainers settle the bargaining problem. And in the process, we'll discover how actors gain bargaining power. In other words, why I am able to leverage some sort of strength to get a value higher, closer to $50, if I am the employee, or if I'm the employer, how I'm able to suppress wages closer to $20. I want to be very specific in the technical goals of this course. We will be emphasizing the technical elements of bargaining in these lectures. Why is that the case? Well, the technical elements of bargaining are the most difficult to understand. Applications are really fun and really neat and really awesome, and I have a ton of them in Game Theory 101 Bargaining. That's the book that you see on your screen. You can find a link to that in the video description. I love those applications. They're great, but in order to understand the applications, you need to have a solid technical baseline to work with. And understanding the technical parts is the most difficult. It's hard to read and just understand immediately the techniques required to fully appreciate bargaining theory. So I'm going to be focusing on these technical aspects in this course, and I'm going to be sprinkling in applications every now and then to illustrate things a little bit better whenever I can. But if you're mainly interested in applications, I suggest that you pick up that book and you will have a whole bunch of different applications to look at, ranging from negotiating a raise like we just talked about, or negotiating a lower price on a used car, or even funner things like understanding deal or no deal, watching Breaking Bad, or playing Monopoly, things like that that are fun. Either way, we're focusing on the technical elements in this course. Now, because we're talking about technical elements, I need to be very certain here that we have a understanding about what sort of prerequisites are required here. And as it turns out, 
I don't actually expect anyone taking this course to be very well off in terms of prerequisites. Calculus is going to be necessary to understand all of the material. We are going to be getting quite technical at one point, and that will require us to take a derivative or two. But knowing calculus is not necessary to understand most of it. So if you don't understand calculus, no need to turn off this lecture, no need to not go on to the next one. You'll still be able to get 98% of this course. No harm, no foul. And where I do use calculus, I'll be able to explain to you in words what's going on. So even if you don't know calculus, you should still get the gist of what we're analyzing. Also, game theory can't hurt. The reason I say that is because at its core, we're going to be finding out that bargaining theory is a study of game theory. We'll talk more about that in the next lecture. But you do not need to have game theory as a background because I will be going over the parts of game theory that you need to know in order to be able to understand the technical materials. Finally, for this lecture, who am I? Well, my name is William Spaniel. If you're watching this lecture, you probably already know who I am, but just in case you don't, I'm a PhD candidate in and an instructor of political science at the University of Rochester. My research studies bargaining over war and nuclear proliferation, and I'm the author of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. So that's that. That's what we're doing in this course. And join me next time when we talk about how we will be analyzing bargaining situations, and the technical requirements of understanding bargaining theory. Hope you enjoy this, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.